After a grip type peering job has been sold and scheduled, you need to call the local utilities locating service to make sure that all underground utilities have been marked. It is important that you speak with the customer when you get to the job to make sure that they have not installed any private utilities, such as a sprinkler system or electrical line. When excavating the foundation, it is very important that you follow all OSHA requirements. Make sure that the hole is dug wide enough and that the proper shoring is used in areas where deep holes are excavated. You need to make sure that you wear proper safety equipment such as eye protection, ear protection, and steel-toed boots. The first step when installing the grip type peering system is to expose the foundation and footing. There are several ways to expose the footing. You can dig individual holes on the inside or outside or dig out the entire foundation wall. When digging out the foundation walls to expose the footing, you will need to dig six inches below the footing. After you have exposed the foundation or before you start to dig individual holes, you will need to determine the location where the piers are going to be installed. You should place the first pier no further than two feet from the corner and depending on the condition of the footing and or the weight of the structure, you should place piers every three to six foot apart. However, piers should never be placed more than six foot apart. If there are cracks in the footing, you will need to place a pier directly under any crack. After exposing the footing, clean off all four materials from the top of the footing, dirt, mortar, concrete, in the area where the piers are to be installed. Using a rotary hammer drill, such as a DeWalt model 25650, Drill 5 8 inch holes through the footing approximately 3 quarters of an inch away from the wall. Placing a 1 by 2 board standing on edge along the wall is a great way to keep the holes straight in line and save you time later during footing preparation. Drill the holes every 2 inches for a total length of 18 inches along the foundation. From the first and last holes, drill holes perpendicular from the wall every 2 inches to the edge of the footing. After drilling all of the holes, use a jackhammer to break out the section of footing that was drilled. Jackhammer one of the perpendicular sides and then the other. Finally, jackhammer along the holes next to the foundation. Once you have jackhammered the sides, if there is no rebar in the area of the section of footing you are breaking out, it should break out easily. Now that the section of footing has been broken out and removed from the area, it is time to prepare the front of the footing so that the grip tight peering bracket can be installed. Using a rotary or chipping hammer with a two inch chisel bit, smooth the front of the footing so that the bracket will fit flush against the footing. Make sure that the front of the footing is flat and not tapered in either direction. If the footing is not properly prepared, it will chip out large sections of concrete or possibly even cause the footing to break. After you have the front of the footing prepared, you will need to remove the dirt from under the footing in this area. You will need to remove the dirt from the bottom of the footing down approximately six inches so that the bracket and cribbing can be installed. This is most easily done by using a rotary hammer drill with a shovel bit and a small shovel. Now that most of the dirt has been removed from below the footing, it is important to check and make sure that there is no dirt stuck to the bottom of the footing. This is the most critical step in the bracket installation process. If you do not remove all of the dirt from the bottom of the footing, it will cause problems during the rest of the pier installation process. Problems such as the bracket moving or bending and or the tubes bending. There are several ways to remove the dirt that is stuck to the bottom of the footing. You can use a small shovel, pry bar, shovel bit on a chipping hammer, or a chisel and hammer. Once you think you have removed all of the dirt from the bottom of the footing, you should remove your glove and check the bottom of the footing to make sure that there is no dirt on the bottom of the footing. If there is any dirt remaining on the footing, you must continue to remove the dirt until there is no dirt stuck to the footing. After all the dirt is removed, check to see if the bottom of the footing is level both side to side and front to back. If the bottom of the footing has a noticeable angle, you are going to need to make it level. There are several ways to do this. The best way is to use a concrete saw and cut it. 
If you do not have a concrete saw, you can use a chipping hammer and chisel. Using a chipping hammer and chisel is time consuming, but if you don't properly prepare the footing, you will have the same problems as if you did not remove all the dirt from the bottom of the footing. Now that the footing has been properly prepared, you will need to dig a small hole in the middle of the area that was prepared for the peering bracket. This hole will need to be approximately four inches wide and eight inches long, four inches under the footing and four inches in front of the footing. It is now time to place the pier bracket under the footing. Start by placing the bracket on the starter tube so that the friction ring is under the bracket. Place the starter tube in the small hole you dug in the prepared area under the footing. Once the bracket is under the footing, pull it up to the bottom of the footing and secure it in place with small pieces of wood on both sides of the bracket. This wood cribbing will hold the bracket tight against the bottom of the footing. While placing the wood under the bracket, make sure that the starter tube is at a slight angle away from the foundation wall, approximately five degrees. The next step is to place the hydraulic ram onto the pier bracket. After you place the ram onto the bracket, insert the hydraulic control valve into the top coupler of the ram and the hydraulic T into the bottom coupler of the ram. With the control valve and the T in place, connect the hydraulic hoses to one side of the control valve and the T and the dead end plug that came with the pump to the other side. The hose that is connected to the control valve at the top coupler of the hydraulic ram needs to be connected to the coupler where the gauge is on the pump. The hose that is connected to the T at the bottom coupler of the hydraulic ram needs to be connected to the other coupler on the pump. Once the hoses have been connected from the hydraulic ram to the pump, make sure that the switch on the pump is in the on position. The pump motor will not run until you turn the on button at the pennant switch to the on position. After making sure that you have power to the pump, put the control valve on the pump in the drive position, handle towards the gauge. Use the pennant switch, push the drive cylinder down until the cylinder head is tight against the starter tube. In order to see if the foundation is moving as you drive the starter tube, or any other tube, you will need to place a marking tube firmly in the ground and against the foundation. Mark the top of the tube on the wall by rubbing the tube back and forth against the wall. Now that the head of the drive cylinder is against the starter tube, it is time to set the five degree angle on the starter tube. This is done by placing a small amount of pressure on the bracket against the bottom of the footing. After you have pressure against the bracket, Place the magnetic protractor on the starter tube and check the angle. You need the angle to be set at 5 degrees from the wall, which is 85 degrees on the protractor, before you can push the remainder of the starter tube. If you do not have a 5 degree angle, you will need to place your foot against the bracket to make sure it stays tight against the face of the footing, and then push or pull the hydraulic ram in the direction you need to change the angle. Once again, put pressure on the bracket against the bottom of the footing and check the angle of the starter tube. You may need to repeat this procedure several times before you get the starter tube set at the five degree angle. Once you have set the five degree angle, you will need to set bracing two by fours, four by fours, one by fours between the hydraulic ram and the foundation wall. This will maintain the five degree angle on the hydraulic ram while you are pushing the rest of the starter tube and the remainder of the tubes. Now that you have the five degree angle and the bracing in place, push the drive cylinder down until it bottoms out. Once the cylinder bottoms out, let off the pennant switch so that the bracket remains tight against the footing. Using a hammer, drive the wood cribbing tight against the bottom of the bracket. This may require additional cribbing. Once you have the cribbing tight, Put the pump in the retraction position and using the pennant switch, retract the drive cylinder to its original position. Place the grip tight driving tube, commonly called the shorty, onto the starter tube, then use the drive cylinder to push the remainder of the starter tube into the ground. Remember to keep your eye on the marking tube anytime you are driving a tube. 
You are now ready to push the grip tight tubes until you reach load bearing strata, never exceeding 4,000 PSI on the pump gauge. You will push the tubes in the same method as the starter tube. There is a coupler on the bottom of each tube that will slide into the top of the previous tube. Make sure that you keep the cribbing tight under the bracket. It is very important that you watch the top of the marking tube against the foundation to see if the foundation is moving. If the foundation moves over a quarter of an inch, you are most likely at load bearing strata. You will need to check to see if the foundation is touching the seal plate of the house. If the foundation is not touching the seal plate of the house, you are most likely not at a load bearing strata. You will need to raise the foundation until it touches the seal plate and then continue to drive tubes until you reach load bearing strata. Once the foundation moves with it tight against the seal plate, you will be ready to lift after the rest of the piers are driven. If a crack develops in the footing on either side of the bracket, you will need to bridge the crack with a piece of two by four by quarter inch steel tubing. You will place the steel tubing on top of the pier bracket. Now that you have the steel on the bracket, raise the bracket tight against the footing, replace the cribbing, and continue to push the tubes until you reach load bearing strata. Once you have reached load bearing strata, you will need to prepare the tube so that you can place the grip tight cap on the tube and prepare it for lifting. You will need to have six and a half inches of tube above the top of the bracket. If the tube is more than six and a half inches above the top of the bracket when you reach load bearing strata, you will need to retract the drive cylinder and slide the grip tight cutting guide over the tube. Do not remove the hydraulic ram. Measure up six and a half inches from the top of the bracket and set the cutting guide. Tighten the set screw on the cutting guide. Using the sawzall or portable band saw, cut the tube off. While cutting off the tube, make sure that you wear safety glasses or a safety shield. Never look in the tube during the cutting process due to the fact that there is an updraft in the tube and the large amount of metal shavings could cause serious eye injury. Now that you have the tube cut off to the right height, you need to install the grip tight reinforcement insert tube inside the last tube. In order to avoid difficulty later, the correct way to install the insert tube is to measure the distance from the top of the peering tube to the coupler in the ground of the same tube. Cut the reinforcement insert tube three inches shorter than the distance from the top of the pier tube to the coupler. This will allow you to insert another tube should it be needed at a later time. If the coupler is higher than the bottom of the bracket, pull the last tube out and insert a full length reinforcement insert tube into the next tube down. Then replace the last tube and cut it off to the required six and a half inches. You could also use a grip tight three inch tube coupler and a piece of previously cut tube to accomplish the needed six and a half inch height. If the last tube is not six and a half inches above the bracket, insert a full length reinforcement insert tube into the pier tube and then install another tube or coupler and piece of tube to get the required six and a half inches of tube above the bracket. Occasionally, the reinforcement insert tube will slide down into the tube, but that is not the norm. If the reinforcement insert tube does not slide into the tube, use the drive cylinder and the shorty to push the reinforcement insert tube into position. You need to drive the reinforcement insert tube at least one inch below the top of the tube. You have now completed driving the first pier. Remove the hydraulic ram and repeat steps one through 20 to the remainder of the piers. If you have more than one pump on a job site, never push two piers next to each other at the same time. This will cause false lift in the preparation of finding load bearing strata. This false lift will keep you from getting the needed pressure on individual piers when it comes time to lift the structure. Once you have completed installing the reinforcement tube and removed the hydraulic ram, you are ready to install the grip tight cap and bolts to the bracket. Be 
Before you take the cap and bolts down into the hole, run a nut down each end of the bolt to make sure that the threads are not damaged. With the cap, nuts, and bolts in the hole, place the cap on top of the tube. If you are going to use a grip tight lift cylinder, you will need to leave an inch and a half to two inches of bolt above the nut on top of the cap so that you can attach the lift cylinder. If you are going to use a grip tight hydraulic ram to lift, you only need to leave about a quarter of an inch of bolt above the top of the cap. Once you have the correct amount of bolt above the nut, run the bottom nut up tight against the bottom of the bracket. Make sure that you tighten the bolts evenly so that the cap stays level. With the cap in place and the bolts tight, you are ready to install the lift cylinder. To install the lift cylinder, set it on the cap with the center of the lift cylinder in the center of the raised welded circle on this cap. Screw the coupler on the bolt that is attached to the lift cylinder to the bracket bolt that is sticking up through the cap. Screw the coupler on the lift cylinder bolt until it bottoms out on the bracket bolt. You may need to adjust the nut on the top of the cap to make sure that there is enough thread for the coupler to be completely screwed onto the bracket bolt. With the coupler of the lift cylinder bolt completely screwed onto the bracket bolt, run the top nut on the bracket bolt up tight against the bottom of the coupler. Adjust the nut on the top of the lift cylinder bolt so that the top nut on the bracket bolt is resting on the cap. Then adjust the nut on the bottom of the bracket so that it is tight against the bottom of the bracket. Finally, tighten the nut on the top of the lift cylinder so that everything stays in place. If you are going to use a hydraulic ram to lift, all you need to do is reattach the hydraulic ram to the bracket. Once you have a lift cylinder or hydraulic ram on each of the piers, you need to connect the hydraulic hoses to each of the lifting devices in series. Start by hooking the first hose to the coupler on the gauge side of the pump and the other end to the closest side coupler of the top control valve on the lifting device. The next hose needs to be connected to the other coupler on the pump to the closest coupler on the T on the bottom of the lifting device. Continue hooking the hoses from one lifting device to the next in series top to top, bottom to bottom. Once all of the hoses are connected, place the dead end plug in the open end of the last lifting device. Now that the hoses are connected to all the lifting devices and the dead end plugs are in place, you need to close all of the control valves. Next, open the control valve on the lifting device closest to the pump. With the pump control valve in the drive position, Use the pennant control to pressure the device to 1,000 PSI. Close the valve on the first lifting device and open the control valve on the second lifting device and using the pennant control to pressure the second lifting device to 1,000 PSI. Continue this procedure until all of the lifting devices have been set to 1,000 PSI. Make sure to close one control valve before opening the next. With all the lifting devices set at 1,000 PSI, you are ready to lift the structure. Open all of the valves and apply pressure using the pennant switch. You may need to open and close valves to get the structure lifted to the correct position in all locations. After the structure has been lifted to the desired level, close all the control valves on all of the lifting devices. Next, tighten all of the nuts on the top and bottom of the brackets which will hold the foundation in place. Now that you have lifted the structure and tightened all of the nuts, you are ready to disconnect the lifting devices and remove the equipment from the hole. The first step is to move the control valve lever on the pump to the retract position. Open the control valve on the lifting device furthest from the pump. Using the pennant switch to retract the cylinder, on the lifting device until about one inch of the cylinder is showing. Move the control valve lever on the pump back and forth to relieve all of the pressure in the cylinder and hoses. Disconnect the hoses from the lifting device and the same hose from the next lifting device. Now open the control valve 
on the second to the last lifting device and follow the same procedure as on the last lifting device. Continue this procedure until all the lifting devices have been retracted and all of the hoses have been disconnected. Having disconnected all of the hoses and removed them from the area, you are ready to disconnect the lifting device. In order to remove the lifting cylinder, you will need to unscrew the coupler on the cylinder bolt from the bracket bolt and remove the lift cylinder from the work area. For the hydraulic ram, you need to remove the control valve and the T and take the hydraulic ram off of the bracket. Sometimes the bracing in front of the hydraulic ram will be very tight against the foundation. If this occurs, the only way to get it out is to use a sledgehammer and knock it out. Once all the equipment and wood cribbing has been removed from the work area, you are ready to backfill. We recommend backfilling 12 to 16 inches of dirt at a time and using a jumping jack gas tamper to tamp the dirt between layers of backfill. You have now completed the installation of the grip tight pier system.